Okay, so uh, the digging's done. Got some unexpected help on that and uh, managed to get it done. Yay. It was still an unbelievably horrible amount of work. And again, to reiterate, if you're going to be digging these type of um, thickened edge trenches, definitely hire someone. So, but it's done now. So now it's time to start putting in the insulation, uh, the vertical foam insulation. But before that goes in, we're going to put in this, um, this uh, PVC, it's a pool. And there's, there's a lot of people say that the only thing that you can use is a particular type of rubber pool liner that's 45 mil mils thick, not 45 millimeters, 45 mils. <laughs> Um, and that particular type of pool liner for this barn to get enough to coverage um, two feet wide by uh, 40 feet by 30 feet by 40 feet by 30 feet um, was going to cost me uh, just about $900 and that's just stupid. So I got this instead. This is a different type of pool liner. It's not rubber, but it's a PVC and instead of being 45 mils thick, is 30 mils thick and if you I don't know if that you can see but it's it's effectively almost like a tarp but it's a PVC material and this is going to go up on these boards and hang down and then the, the insulation will go up against it why do you need that you may ask well here's the here's the issue um, burrowing insects do not ingest uh, or eat uh, styrene foams, uh, XPS insulation. They don't care. They don't like it. It's not their thing, but they have the ability to burrow through it. And they also have the ability to smell wood even a long way away. And they have this, this instinctive thing, uh, need to burrow. And so even though this, all of this bottom wood here, this is all pressure treated, meaning it's insect resistant per se, the rest of the wood in the barn is not. And so when you have this type of insulation, if that foam insulation is up against the outside dirt, burrowing insects, carpenter ants and termites, those type of critters will burrow through the XPS insulation on their way to get to the, uh, the wood, which they want to eat. Um, so the way that you avoid that is through this type of uh, material, this, either the rubber, the PVC, the thick, heavy duty, strong material. They don't burrow through this. They can't eat through this. And so this is here, uh, not as a water liner per se. I mean, it does repel water. It is waterproof. I mean, it's a pool liner after all, but it, uh, golly, is that zoomed in? There, good God, my hands were giant. I had massive hands. I have no idea what I looked like on camera when I was talking. So you might've been looking at like a single pore on my cheek when I was talking. Anyway, this, uh, this material, they can't burrow through it. So this material, even though it's waterproof and does protect against water, that's not its purpose. Its purpose is to stop burrowing insects to come from coming in underground and getting into the, to the insulation. And you know, they'll come down quite a ways. Now they're not gonna go down 24 inches. They're only gonna come down about this far, maybe eight, 10 inches at most to get to it. After that, they're gonna give up because they're too far down. But that's the purpose of this. So this material is going up all the way around. Uh, just It just gets stapled up, it's nothing magical or anything. It'll go all the way around the barn. It'll get stapled up. Once that's in place, we'll start cutting the foam, laying the foam in and uh, proceed to the next steps. So that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, all of my, my um, liner, I freaking forgot the name. I've just drew a complete blank. Uh, pond, there we go. All my pond liner is in place. That's the material that we talked about earlier. It's all throughout the barn. It's where it's supposed to be. So the next step is to start cutting and installing the actual insulation um, that's gonna be there vertically inside that trench 
uh, it'll press up against the liner and um, I gotta cut it and install it. And now it's time for the the unplay, unpaid, unreimbursed product placement. I'm not getting any money for Owens Corning. In fact, I spent a frick ton of money on their products. So we've got uh, two pallets of Owens Corning uh, Foamular 250 XPS foam core insulation. It's an R10 value, it's two inches thick. Um, and it's got uh, 25 PSI compressive strength. So 25 pounds per square inch. It can handle before it starts to dent. It's really strong stuff. And um, this is the one I'm using. I would prefer their NGX as opposed to their XPS, uh, excuse me, their NGS, uh, NGX. The XPS is the current uh, best they have, except for the NGX, which is the next generation. What's the difference between the XPS and the NGX? NGX stands for next generation XPS. And it is much greener for the environment. It doesn't admit some of the um, environmental gases, uh, uh, chloral form or whatever. It doesn't, in greenhouse gases. It doesn't emit the no amount of greenhouse gases as the XPS does uh, when, they, when they're making it. The XPS, however, is extremely much better than what's called EPS foam insulation. So there's uh, expanded foam insulation and there's extruded foam insulation. And the expanded foam insulation is another product by many other companies. They all make it. And some of them make XPS as well, but the expanded one is the most common one. It's the cheapest. Um, it's also really, really, really bad for the environment. So I can't use it. Um, emotionally, I have issues. If I could get it, the honest truth is I would actually go away from this whole styrene plastic insulation and I would get um, rock wool. Uh, uh, you remember in some of my other videos, I've talked about rock wool insulation. It's a, it's a replacement for fiberglass mat. It's a, effectively, it's spun basalt. They make a version to go underneath concrete. Uh, and it's basically spun basalt, two inches thick, or three inches thick, four inches thick, just like the XPS stuff is. You get it whatever thickness you need. It has an incredible uh, compressive strength. It is fantastic, and it emits zero, zero greenhouse gases in both manufacturing and once it's in place. It's also immune to water. It's, it is absolutely the best product you can get. Unfortunately, because of COVID and construction costs and delays and stuff like that right now you can't get it anywhere and it doesn't matter oh it's at a fair price or whatever no you simply cannot get the product it is not available anywhere in North America I've checked with every single vendor I've checked with the manufacturer you can't get it no one's got it right now so got to go with what you can get so this is the product I'm going to use and uh we're gonna cut this up into sections and start installing, yeah. Okay, so here I'm in the barn, I'm cutting my XPS foam insulation to, to fit, and it occurred to me, because I, I was like, I gotta check on the internet and go do the YouTubes. How do you cut this stuff? What do you use to cut it? And there's lots of recommendations out there. Uh, you can use a handsaw, you can use uh, like a utility knife, a razor knife. Um, by far the most common ones that I am seeing on the internet are people telling you to take a putty knife or a taping knife that you use for sheetrock when you're putting up the tape, uh, when, you're, when you're taping for sheetrock, both a lot, of, a lot of them say take a putty knife or a taping knife and then just take your grinder and grind down an edge and make it razor sharp. And uh, then you can use that to score the, the foam and then once you've scored it a few times, then you could snap it and it's beautiful and looks great. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I could do that. But I also ascribe to the Jerry McClarkson school of, of building things. And if you've got fricking power tools, use them. So we have just a standard Milwaukee saw and my foam insulation. And I'm gonna try and do this with one hand while filming, and this is how hard it is to cut. You ready? Here we go. It's gonna get loud. Pretty 
simple. Now, granted, there's a crap ton of styrofoam dust and particles laying about that there wouldn't be if I was using a, a putty knife or that kind of stuff. But part of building stuff and doing stuff while your own, while doing stuff on your own is enjoying it. And I guarantee you, there's a lot more pleasure in running that power saw than there is a freaking putty knife. So, little tip, enjoy your work. Oh yeah, and there's the edge. See, it's not bad at all. So actually installing the insulation board is stupid simple. Once you get it cut to size, um, it's just silly simple. You need a bunch of two and a half inch screws. I've got a whole bucket full of them right there. A bunch of two and a half inch screws, a driver for them. And you put it up on the wall and you run the screws in. You don't need a lot. That one has four because I got kind of crazy. Um, well, because I forgot the corners. The one thing you do got to remember is get in the middle, get on a corner. You're only doing the tops. You don't need to bother with the bottom at all because when the concrete goes in, when the concrete fills this in, it's going to press up against it, hold everything in place. The whole purpose of putting these screws in is to hold it against the board long enough so that it doesn't float away or move away when the concrete goes in, which is why I've got a screw in the corner so the concrete doesn't flow behind it, pull the board out. Okay, that's it. That's all you got to do. It's, it's Silly, silly, simple to install. Cut them length, cut them to size. If you got a, a corner like this, like I do, um, grab your, your little utility knife and just cut a little notch in to get it to fit. Throw the screw in. Once it's cut to size, it, it takes all of about 25 seconds to put mount a board. It's stupid. It's so, it is so easy. It is very simple. It is not hard. It's ridiculously simple. So this is a job that you don't need to hire someone to do unless you've got money to burn. So do this job by yourself. Uh, pay someone to dig the trenches. Fair reminder. Anyway, I'm going to keep going, knock the rest of this out. Well, it's um, Sunday afternoon, uh, June 26th, and uh, hey, happy birthday, Mom. Anyway, um, we're done. Uh, my brother-in-law, John, came over and helped me finish this up, but if we walk around, you'll notice all of the um, thickened edge insulation is in place. That red thing you there, you see there, that's a seam tape. Uh, for that type of insulation is designed specifically for it. It's stupidly expensive, by the way. Um, so everywhere I have a seam, I've got the tape in place. So this is all in place all the way around. Yay. I still don't have the doors done because I need to wait until after we get the grade in here done. So my, my builder's going to come in, my concrete guy, he's going to come in. He's going to do a final grade on this sand floor. And then uh, once that's done, I can dig out... Uh, low non-deep trenches and put in the plumbing lines over there uh, for the bathroom, uh, the shower, the sink, toilet, put in the shop sink lines, put another shop sink line over there, drain lines, etc. I'll dig all that out, um, put the plumbing in, get my plumbing inspection passed. Once that plumbing inspection passes, I can bury that back in, get it all tamped and nice, and then I'll start putting this insulation um, in on the floor that will go We'll lay the insulation and then we'll lay the, the uh, hydronic PEX pipe on top of that. Uh, throw in a vapor barrier in there and then we'll, we'll be ready to pour for concrete. So that's where we're at. Finally getting some progress, starting to feel like I'm close to the end. Thanks for watching.